with a very cool instrument that you heard in the very beginning of this video. Now this is a Genco xylophone, and what's kind of cool about it is it's actually vintage. It's maybe from the 1940s or 50s or thereabout in that general era, and uh, it's a pretty neat instrument. There's a few cool things about it that I wanted to tell you about, and uh, I also wanted to tell you guys that I bought this instrument used, which you might guess because I just told you it was very old, and as of late I've been doing a lot of videos of instruments that I found on Craigslist. There's really cool organs and pianos and keyboards and all kinds of cool things that I found on Craigslist and have done videos on now. And a lot of the times when I go out to these Craigslist ads, I end up not buying the instrument, but every time I do go, I am always checking and looking to see, can I use this instrument in my studio? And you know, would it get used a lot? And how useful would it be in music? And a lot of the times it just turns out it wouldn't get used a lot in the studio, but the instruments would be super cool. And this one here, however, is one that's gonna get used a lot in the studio. It has a very bright, happy sound, and it really sounds awesome. And so I wanted to demonstrate it for you guys today. Um, play it along with that loop that you heard a little bit of in the beginning, uh, just for a bit. It's a, small, it's a short little loop I've uh, pl played around with. I composed it this morning and realized that the xylophone fits really well with it, uh, at least in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think of the xylophone going in with this loop. Does it fit or does it not fit? Let me know. And uh, I just thought I'd show you guys this. Now these mallets I'm using here are not really the bright mallets to use. I just happen to have these lying around. Normally with xylophones, people would use plastic uh, headed mallets or even metal mallets in some cases. Now the danger with the metal mallets is that since they're so much harder than the rosewood that they're hitting, they'll leave dents and that can actually affect the pitch and the sustain of the notes if they get dented up enough. Uh, plastic mallets I think are more safe. You're, you'd run less of a risk if you hit the, mal uh, hit the bars. I don't think it would go and put dents in the bars as easy and I think a hard yarn mallet you'd be pretty safe with. Now these mallets are kind of cool because they have two ends. There's a softer end here and then there is a harder end here. And if you play with the softer end, you can hear that the xylophone has kind of a softer, more mellow sound. If we flip that around to have the harder side, you can hear it's louder, it's brighter, it's sharper, and it would definitely cut through a bunch of instruments or a mix very, very well. Um, generally, you'd want to use the harder mallets on kind of the right-hand side and the uh, softer mallets on the left-hand side, particularly with the marimba, which has a much bigger range, but even the harder mallets work down here as well. But also, the softer mallets work on the entire instrument as well. Now with softer versus harder mallets, in some cases a soft mallet really will not make the high end work, especially if it's a really soft mallet. But in this case, the soft mallets will work, you just have to hit the note harder than you would with the hard mallet. And if I use the hard side of the mallet, it's about the same loudness, but I hardly hit it anywhere near as hard. So if you're using a really hard mallet, like a metal or a plastic mallet, you want to make sure that you're not really hitting the note hard because you don't need to as much if you're using a softer mallet. Now, as you can see, there's a Genco logo right here, and that, of course, means that this xylophone was made by Genco. Uh, Genco made a lot of uh, different instruments kind of like this in the past. They made, I know for a fact, they made Celestas. I think they made standard size Celestas that you could actually sit down at and play, and they also made a tabletop Celesta that you could um, just set on a table and then just you know, set it there and play. It had little resonator tubes that would fold up and it was kind of cool. They, I think they also made full-size marimbas and orchestral chimes, but I'm not 100% positive on that. Now this xylophone, it actually has wheels on the bottom, so you can just roll it around really easy. Even though it doesn't weigh that much at all, you still have wheels, which is pretty nice. It raises it up higher off the ground, which is nice for me. Without the wheels, it's a little bit short and I kind of have to bend over to play it. And also the legs can fold up and there's a handle on my side here, so you can just pick up the instrument and walk around with it. I think if you were carrying it, I don't know if your hand would hit the bars or it might be uncomfortable, but I guess you could hold it on this side and have the bars facing inwards towards you and then that wouldn't be an issue. So now I'm sure you're curious what the instrument will sound like with the loop. You heard a little bit in the beginning, but now you probably want to hear a bit more. But before I do that, I thought I'd just show you the different instruments that I use on the loop as well. I've got my looper down there. And I just wanted to show you that because it can help, you know, understand what's going on and it can help you enjoy the music just a little bit more. So let's go, let's go show you that. So down here we have the looper and I just thought I'd show you guys what I did on the track. So when I first started off and I was like, I'm going to record a song, I actually wrote the bass line first, which was the organ sound on the SV-1. And I played it down here in the bass and that's what this sounds like. 
that's what that is. But what's actually kind of cool is I coupled it with the piano bass, and the piano bass is an instrument that was made by Fender, and it's basically the bass end of a Fender Rhodes um, electric piano. And so if you listen really closely, you can hear that in there as well. If you listen closely, you can hear that down there. It's a really low bass end. It has a really cool growl to it, which added a lot to the song. Then after that, I just added in some chords. I used another organ sound on the SV-1 to do so. Just that. And then after that was done, I also added in a melody, which I put on track three. And all together, it sounds like this. I also added in a drum track that the looper had on. It's just like a shuffle kind of thing. And so then all together with the drums, it sounds like this. So that's the loop. And now let's go play the xylophone along with this loop. I think it fits in really well, and you guys can let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. All right, we're back at the xylophone here, and now I'm going to go play the looper and play along with it, and hopefully you enjoy. thought down in the comment section below. Now if you're curious about knowing more about the xylophone as well as other instruments that are similar to it like the the marimba, the vibraphone, glockenspiel and other stuff like that, um, make sure to stay tuned and you might even want to subscribe because in the future I'm going to be uh, taking the xylophone back to my studio and then I'm going to be uh, showing you the differences between a xylophone and a marimba. I happen to have a concert grand five octave uh, Muster M500 marimba um, that is basically longer than a concert grand Steinway piano and uh, I wanted to just show you guys the differences between a you know a vibraphone and a xylophone and marimba and glockenspiel because there's actually a lot of confusion about those instruments even though they're actually distinctly different. So if that sounds interesting to you, you might want to think about subscribing and if you do that, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.